Well, hey there everyone, this is Jaren with retipster.com and in today's video, I'm actually really excited because I'm gonna introduce you to one of my favorite CRM systems that's specifically designed for land investors. Are you ready? Introducing REI Pebble. REI Pebble is a CRM platform that's made by land investors for land investors. I like to think of it like a command center or if you think of a plane, like the cockpit of your land flipping business. To briefly define what a CRM system is for those who may not know, a CRM is an acronym for Customer Relationship Management. Though the name kind of implies that a CRM only deals with stuff concerning customer relationships, in reality, a CRM system is much more than that. It's a software program that's designed to help organize and maintain the entirety of a company. So I'm about to make a pretty bold statement. In my opinion, Pebble might just be the best all around CRM within the entire land flipping community. For that matter, it might be one of the best CRMs in all of real estate. At least that's how I feel about it right now at the time this video is being recorded. And please take note of that. I feel like Pebble is one of the best CRM options right now at the time and date I'm making this video. But in the future, my opinion on that might change. One of the challenges that comes with making videos like this is that software is inevitably going to change, adjust, and evolve over time. Sometimes those changes are good, but sometimes they take a turn for the worst. So don't be mad at us here at Ari Tipster if we decide to change our opinion or begin recommending something else instead of Pebble at some point down the road. With all that out of the way, at this very moment in time, I'm a huge fan of Pebble and I feel like they're a true game changer. Whether it's organizing leads, inventory, automating tasks, tracking sales metrics, or even processing direct mail, REI Pebble is so powerful that it can handle all of those things and more. Despite the overwhelming amount of positives, Pebble definitely has its fair share of negatives as well, and we're gonna address all of those in full detail later in this video. One last thing I'll mention, since I'm already on this rabbit trail of disclaimers, I don't want anyone watching this video to feel as though they have to have a fancy CRM system to run a successful land business. I've recently made the switch and am now transitioning to using Pebble in my own land business, but for years, my preferred CRM system, if you can even call it that, was just a handful of spreadsheets that I created for free within Google Drive. Over the years, I've given a fair amount of CRMs a try, but unfortunately, they always ended up not working out. They were either too complicated, too limiting, or were just awkward because they weren't designed with the land business in mind. Each time I would try a new CRM, it always felt like trying to place a square peg in a round hole. So in the end, I always defaulted back to my spreadsheets and it totally worked. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't hyper organized or nice to look at all the time, but it was sufficient enough for me to continue to grow profitably over the years. The point I'm trying to make here is that just because Pebble exists and it's super awesome, that doesn't automatically mean it's the right fit for you and your business. It's possible that your land business is nuanced enough that your CRM has to do stuff that Pebble just isn't designed to do. On the flip side, you may not be super tech savvy and get overwhelmed with all that Pebble can do. Or maybe you're just starting out in your land business and money is a little tight. So instead of spending money on a fancy CRM, you'd be much better off spending that money on the next direct mail campaign or deal. So please hear me. I'm not saying that Pebble is the right fit for everybody, but for a lot of land investors out there that are actively looking for a CRM, I think Pebble may just be exactly what you're looking for and I'm really excited to share it with you. So with that, let's hop on the computer together and we're gonna walk through everything that Pebble has to offer, the good, the bad, and everything in between. Okay, before we go ahead and actually log in, I need to let you know something. Joining Pebble is a lot more than simply gaining access to a CRM. It's joining a community. Pebble's parent company, REI Conversion, does a great job engaging with its customers, and they provide a ton of opportunities to connect, learn, network, and grow as a land investor. At the time this video is being recorded, probably the two largest outlets for engaging with the community are the Facebook group, and for users of Pebble specifically, the private Slack workspace. And if I'm honest with you, the advice 
insights, and level of transparency among community members is pretty impressive. Beyond a super engaging community, REI Conversion also routinely offers free training events, which if we actually go here underneath this resources tab, you can find under upcoming events. Beyond that, they have a podcast, YouTube channel, and they even provide an entire mini course that's free called the Success Guide that teaches users how to get the most out of their Pebble and REI conversion experience. Now, I'm not gonna dwell too much on this because obviously this video is to highlight Pebble, but if you happen to be a real estate investor, especially if you're in the land space, REI conversion provides two different website templates REI Land Leads and REI Land List that for real estate investors are great options as a starter website. I actually happen to use them myself and I honestly couldn't be happier with their service. That's the only thing I'm gonna mention for the rest of the video about the other products that REI Conversion provides. But again, if you're in need of a website, it's definitely worth a consideration. By the way, if you're interested in joining Pebble or subscribing to one of the website solutions offered by REI Conversion, Ari Tipster actually has an affiliate relationship with both. If you want to try out either of them and at the same time do something to support the Ari Tipster community, which would be greatly appreciated, our affiliate links are aritipster.com forward slash pebble and aritipster.com forward slash REI conversion. You can find both links listed beneath the video for your convenience. Moving on from there, the last thing I want us to go over before we actually get this show on the road and log into Pebble is I want to go over the different types of accounts. Starting on the right, we have the solo account, then in the middle, we have the team, and then finally on the left, we have the pro account. First, let's scroll down to where it says lead automation. As we can clearly see, this means that if you're on a solo account, you won't have the ability to set up automatic task lists, zaps within Zapier, deadlines, or assignments based on a particular stage that a lead happens to be on. We'll cover exactly what stages are here in a bit, but the point is, if your goal is to create a lot of automation, the solo account is probably not for you. Now the next feature to point out, I actually think is one worth paying attention to. Automated lead tracking is the feature that allows a user to automatically populate any inbound leads within Pebble. To reiterate, if you'd like to set it up so that any missed call, text message, or voicemail, or whenever somebody happens to submit their property information through an opt-in form on your website, you want to have Pebble take that information and automatically create a new lead record within your account. In order to make that happen, you're either going to have to be on a team or pro account. Next, and if I'm honest with you, this one's kind of Captain Obvious. As the name suggests, the solo account won't provide any of the team management features. You'll have to either be on a team or pro account to have access to things like the team activity log, notifications, multiple user access, and so on. Now, if we scroll back to the top of this section here, you may notice that the team and pro accounts seem to have very similar features. From what I can tell, the only difference between the two is that on a team account, you can only have up to four users, whereas on a pro account, you can have unlimited users. Other than that, to my knowledge anyway, they're pretty much the same. Now, these three accounts that we just went over are the options that we have available when it comes to using Pebble as a CRM. There is one last account, however, for us to consider. If we scroll down to the bottom of this section, we're gonna see Pebble's starter plan. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a pretty big fan. Here's the thing. I can totally understand someone not being interested in using Pebble as a CRM. I think for a lot of land investors, myself included, it's a fantastic solution and likely to be the exact thing we've been looking for. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, some people may just be too low tech for Pebble or they may be limited on capital or need a CRM that can do something beyond what Pebble is capable of. However, if we talk about using Pebble exclusively for the purpose of processing direct mail marketing, I think pretty much every land investor should give them a serious consideration. For one, their price is super competitive. If we click here and we scroll down from this section underneath discounted print and mail pricing, there's this link that will show you a comparison between Pebble and other major direct mail processors. Let's have a look. You can see that when compared to a lot of popular direct mail companies like ITI Direct Mail, which was who I used for years, click to mail Lob, and Offers to Owners, Pebble frankly crushes it 
on price. The only real competitor that I'm aware of is a company called Rocket Print and Mail whose parent company is Postcard Mania. The primary advantage I see Rocket Print having over Pebble is that as you do higher volumes of mail, they get cheaper and cheaper on a per letter or per unit basis. If you're considering Rocket Print, be aware that they require all customers to purchase a minimum of 5,000 units of mail per order. This means that to use their services, a customer has to pay as though they're planning to send out at least 5,000 pieces of mail every time they submit an order for a new campaign. Now, you don't have to send out 5,000 pieces of mail with each campaign. Units of mail essentially work like credit, so if they're unused, they do carry over. One other thing worth noting about Rocket Print is that they have fantastic customer service and are super nice. However, their extreme level of customer service can be somewhat of a double-edged sword. For those of you who like one-on-one -on -one attention, Rocket Print is the only direct mail company that I know of who assigns one specific person to oversee your account as a customer. On one hand, this is kind of cool because if I ever have a question, I don't have to waste 15 minutes explaining who I am and what I do every time I call into customer service. On the other hand though, I oftentimes find myself having to jump through a bunch of social formalities whenever I call in to customer service, when all I really want to do is just get to my objective as quickly as possible. If you're someone who doesn't really like talking to people and you value privacy and don't really like people asking you about your kids or your plans for the holidays, Rocket Print can be a lot to put up with. But if you are a people person and you enjoy that kind of thing, Rocket Print is one of the best of its kind. Personally, as an extrovert, I don't mind Rocket Print's level of customer service, but this can kind of be a double-edged sword. If you're extroverted like me and you like talking to people, Rocket Print is a great option, but there is something to be said about simply being able to get mail out the door without having to talk to anybody or wait around for someone else to get finished with their part of the process. When you onboard with Rocket Print, it takes a few weeks for them to set up your account. With Pebble, it's not like that. You simply log in, upload your list, select whatever letter template you want to use, and hit the activate button, and that's it. That level of simplicity, coupled with its price, makes Pebble a pretty strong contender for pretty much every land investor to heavily consider. Now, in full disclosure, I need to mention that certain customization features, like choosing whether or not your envelope is opened or closed, having the option to use a special color for your letter or for your envelope or a special font or something, Pebble may have some limitations there. But when it comes to the actual processing itself, like the practical getting the mail out the door, I honestly don't know of any other direct mail company that can compete with Pebble. It's just so simple and straightforward to use. So with all that out of the way, let's finally get logged in and I'll show you all that Pebble has to offer. Okay, now that we're logged in, let's first look at everything from kind of a 30,000 foot overview. Starting on the left hand side here, you'll see that underneath this drop down menu, we have six primary sections. The dashboard, campaigns, sellers, buyers, properties, and settings. Under that, we have this website menu where if we click on that, this is where you can easily access the back end of your website if you happen to integrate with the website solutions offered by REI Conversion, namely REI Land Leads and REI Land List. After that, we have a notifications section, and this is where you'll see any app mentions and ongoing activities on your team if you're on either a pro or team account. At the bottom, where you see my picture here, if we click on these three vertical dots, we can access our account settings, switch teams, or access something called the knowledge base, which is a database of sorts that's designed to answer common questions related to Pebble's features and benefits. So if you need some guidance or if you're stuck on setting something up, you need some tutorials or what have you, the knowledge base is where you're gonna wanna go. Now to be clear, this account section right here is where you edit things like your email, your company details, adding and removing team members, and handle billing and subscription levels. Going back underneath the Pebble menu, 
This settings section is where you access what I like to call the document template library, but Pebble just officially calls it templates. Access and modify property fields, and we'll circle back to this later here in a bit. Access your Pebble specific email addresses and manage integrations into third-party apps like your REI conversion website, Zapier, or HubSpot. Let's go ahead for a moment and go back to this automation section because I want to shed some light on these two unique Pebble generated email addresses, one for seller leads and one for buyer leads. If you ask me, I think the way that Pebble structured this email system is pretty genius. It takes what would normally be a simple notification email and then turns it into some pretty sweet automation. Any software that has the ability to send data through a notification email can be set up to sync with Pebble. But for the sake of example, let's talk about this in the context of virtual phone providers. Whether it's CallRail, Grasshopper, OpenPhone, or whatever company of your choice, 99.999% of them provide the ability for customers to set up email notifications whenever there's something like a missed call, a new text message, or voicemail. Well, instead of having your virtual phone provider send a notification to your personal or work email, simply list either the seller address or the buyer address that you see displayed here as the destination that you want to receive notifications at, and boom, Pebble will take those notification emails and automatically populate a new lead record. Here in a bit, we're gonna circle back to the seller section for a much closer look at everything. But do you see this column titled Lead In? These are new seller records that were automatically populated by Pebble based on the data provided from the notification emails that OpenPhone sent my unique seller inbox address associated with my account. Since we're already on the subject, let me highlight something to you that's very nuanced about Pebble. When it comes to virtual phone providers, if they happen to send out voicemail notifications as an email attachment, meaning the audio file is an attachment within the notification email, Pebble will not register that attachment. To be clear, a new lead record will populate and whatever was included in the body of that notification email, like a transcript or copy that says, hey, new voicemail or whatever it is, that will show up in the record. But the most important part, <laughs> the attached voicemail audio file won't. Which to me is a major issue because it essentially makes the automated lead tracking feature completely useless. A new lead record will be created, but it won't include the audio file of the voicemail. So you'll still need to access that voicemail through your email, defeating the whole point. In fact, because of this very issue, while I was in the process of setting up my Pebble account and preparing for this video, I actually had to switch from Freedom Voice to Open Phone. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm actually really happy that I made the switch to Open Phone because if I'm honest, they're probably my favorite virtual phone provider I've ever used. That said though, this is an issue that you definitely need to be aware of if you're giving Pebble a serious consideration. If you are on a pro or team account and you wanna take advantage of the automatic lead tracking feature, you'll need to make sure that the virtual phone provider you choose includes the audio file for notification emails concerning voicemail within the text body of the emails and not as an attachment. Now that we've walked through everything kind of at a high level, let's take a moment and dive into each section individually, starting off with the dashboard. Now, I gotta be honest. I told you guys that I would give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. Pebble is so beautifully designed that I doubt we're gonna run into anything ugly here, but I will say I think we've come to the bad. I feel like the dashboard is probably Pebble's weakest link. I really like the idea of what the dashboard is trying to accomplish. Its goal is to track and display essential conversion metrics automatically based on the activity that takes place within the account itself, like sending out mail, the total amount of leads created, leads that were won versus lost, how many properties have sold, the amount of money they sold for, and so on. The problem though is that the way Pebble is tracking the data is based on totals, meaning the total amount of mail ever sent, the total amount of lead records ever created, and so on, over the entire duration an account has been in existence. Without the ability to filter the metrics that are displayed here by a specific campaign, or even for that matter, other criteria like tags, stages, or dates, unfortunately, what's displayed here really isn't all that helpful. 
ultimately the goal for tracking conversion metrics is to assess the overall performance of your business's marketing and sales efforts. So being unable to filter based on a specific campaign or other criteria means I can't tell which campaign or activity outperformed the other. Now, fortunately, Pebble has provided other ways to extract this information from within the properties tab, but we're gonna cover that section a little later. The point I'm trying to make when it comes to the dashboard section is that it doesn't really give us many options to assess our data in a way that's very meaningful or useful. Sure, at a high level, we can go up here to the top right hand corner and sort based on the last 30 days, year to date, or all time, but what happens if we run two or three different campaigns all at once? What if two out of three of those campaigns produce literally no deals and did nothing but cost us money? With the way that things are currently designed, I wouldn't be able to tell one way or the other. And not to belabor the point, but the same issues that I have with the metrics related to direct mail that are displayed here at the top are the same issues I have with the property related metrics listed here at the bottom. When Pebble registers a property as being bought or sold, a user isn't forced to factor in things like closing costs, agent commissions, notary fees, or extra expenses related to due diligence like land surveys, perk tests, or even attorney fees like if you have to go through probate or something. It also doesn't factor in profit splits among potential money partners or the cost of using some form of credit through conventional financing. Without extra information like this, again, I just don't feel like the metrics that are displayed here are all that accurate or useful. To sum it up, I love the idea behind this section, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. If I had it my way, I would have another tab on the left-hand side here called metrics that would do what the dashboard is currently trying to do with the added ability to sort through the data at a very granular level, giving the user a lot more options when it comes to filtering their data. I would then use the dashboard section as a high level overview page. Maybe it could sync with the user's calendar and show upcoming events for the day or display the information that's currently displayed underneath the notification section. Or maybe it could display stuff like my task list or reminders, or for that matter, an overview of all the tasks across my entire team. Maybe Pebble could design this in a way that allows the user to customize this section with high level overviews that they personally care about. And since I've already gone on and on about all my design suggestions here, I may as well just add one more. I'm surprised that Pebble does not offer a vendor section where you could store contact information for real estate agents, title companies, attorneys, survey companies, and what have you. I would love to have a section on this side called vendors as well, but that's enough of my wish list. Let's move on to campaigns. Here under the campaigns tab, we find a hub for all things related to direct mail marketing. This is where we upload and manage our mailing lists, start and stop campaigns, as well as decide on our preferred mailing options, like whether or not we wanna use standard or first class postage, choosing between either a letter or a postcard template, having our mail piece be in color or in black and white, and so on. You know, as I was preparing for this video, I thought long and hard about the best way to go about showcasing all that Pebble can do in regards to direct mail, and honestly, I think it's best if we just simply go through the entire process of starting a new campaign from start to finish. That may sound extensive, but trust me, sending mail through Pebble is so quick and simple that it's only gonna take us a few minutes and it truly is the most straightforward and thorough way for us to explore all that the campaign section has to offer. Now I've already went ahead and pulled a list of landowners and their respective addresses from my preferred data service provider, shout out to datatree.com. So we're actually ready to rock and roll. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to this add campaign button and then going from top to bottom, Underneath campaign name, we're simply gonna name our campaign. I typically follow a naming convention that starts with the state name followed by the month and then the year. So for example, right now at the time I'm recording this video, it's December, 2021. So my campaign name might be something like Florida, December, 2021. Obviously you can name your campaign whatever you would like, but for the sake of our video today, I'm gonna go with the mock Pebble review campaign, just so that I don't confuse it with my other real campaigns. Underneath template, you can see that by default, my account is selecting a letter template called current mail template 2021 and beyond. 
But from this drop down menu, I can select any saved template I have available underneath Pebble's document section. As we mentioned earlier, to access the section where you can create and modify document templates is right underneath the settings tab on the left here. Now I gotta say, Pebble comes pre-stocked with a handful of some pretty awesome document templates. Not only does Pebble provide letter or postcard templates for the purposes of direct mail, like a blind offer campaign, a range letter, neutral letter, postcard, what have you, it also provides things like a sample purchase agreement and deed template for both buying and selling a property. Beyond the pre-stock templates already created, Pebble also allows for users to create custom templates with just a click of a few buttons. For example, I have a custom template for a mortgage and promissory note that I use every time I use a private money lender when I purchase a property. And likewise, when I sell a property that originally was purchased through a private money lender, I have a custom template for a mortgage payoff. I also have a custom direct mail template that I use, as well as a custom template for a one-page purchase agreement. How these templates work is that within Pebble's document editor, we use these placeholders that we see highlighted in light blue, kind of scattered throughout the entire document. And these placeholders merge specific information from property records to certain spots within the document where that information is most relevant. Think of things like the seller name, the property address, the APN number, legal description, the sale price, closing date, and so on. Once these placeholders have been put in their proper location throughout the document, if we go to any property record underneath the document section and select to create a document, once we select the template that we want to use, all of the relevant information related to that specific property record will automatically merge within the document, which is pretty powerful if you ask me. To create a new template, whether it's one pre-made by Pebble or one you want to build on your own, all you have to do is simply click this add template button and then you can choose between direct mail letter templates, postcard templates, or inbound or outbound contracts and deeds. Now what Pebble means by inbound versus outbound is that inbound means that you as the Pebble user are the buyer and outbound means that you as the Pebble user are the seller. And then from there, underneath this section called daily send count, do you see the number 100 here? What this means is that Pebble's default option is to break up the total amount of mail units this particular campaign has into intervals of 100 letters, postcards, or whatever your mail piece happens to be per day. So for example, let's say our campaign has a thousand addresses we need to send a letter to. If you left the number 100 here, Pebble would mail out the total amount of a thousand letters over a 10 day period. A thousand letters total divided by a hundred letters per day equals a 10 day period. If instead you wanted to have all 1000 letters go out all in one drop all at the same time, you'd come here and then you'd simply change this 100 to be equal or greater than the total amount of addresses associated with your particular campaign. So in the case of our example, we would change this from 100 to 1000 or more. To reiterate, if I put the total amount of mail units or greater in this field underneath daily send count, that will prompt Pebble to send out all of my letters at one time. If the number you put in this field underneath daily send count exceeds the total amount of addresses available for your particular campaign, don't worry. Nothing's gonna break, there's nothing bad that's gonna happen. Pebble will just send out letters to the total amount of addresses that they have on file related to that campaign and nothing more. Moving on from there, underneath mail type, this is where I select whether I want standard or first class mail. I'm gonna just stick to standard and then underneath print type, this is where we can select whether we wanna have our mail piece in color or in black and white. For our purposes, I'm gonna keep it black and white. And then under double sided, I'm gonna go ahead and select no, because if you remember, the letter template that we're using in today's video is just a single page neutral letter. With that, let's go ahead and hit save and move on to the next step. Now we're at the stage where we're going to upload our direct mail spreadsheet. As you can see, we have two choices, single county and multi-county. Under the single county tab, we are prompted to select the specific county and state we're mailing to, and then we're prompted to upload our direct mail spreadsheet. 
Now, when it comes to the multi-county tab, we simply need to upload our spreadsheet. There's no prompt asking us to declare what specific counties we're mailing to. But there is something that you need to be aware of here. In order for the multi-county tab to work, you need to have something called an FIPS code for each and every property that's listed within your spreadsheet. Most data service providers have these FIPS codes widely available. You just have to include it within your data set before you export a list. For example, if we look in data tree for a moment, once we've gone through and selected the specific criteria and demographics of who we wanna to mail to, once we go up here and we hit the export button, we're taken to this window where on the left, we have a bunch of information that we can choose to include or not to include within the spreadsheet that we download. From here, we can go to this search bar listed underneath property characteristics export and then type in the letters FIP. And as we can see, the IFPS code displays accordingly. When exporting a direct mail list from data tree, I'm gonna make sure that I've checked this box before exporting my list. Now the example list that we're using in today's video does happen to be multiple county. So let's go ahead and grab that and get it uploaded. By the way, just so you're aware, Pebble will only support lists that are in the CSV format. If you try to import a list that is not a CSV file, Pebble is just simply going to reject it. Now that we've officially went ahead and grabbed our list, let's go ahead and move to the next step by clicking this upload button. Now that we've went ahead and uploaded our list successfully, our next step is to sync the data within that list with its corresponding property field within Pebble. That way, once we finalize our list import successfully, all the new property records that Pebble creates will include the relevant data that we want from our spreadsheet and put that data in its correct place so that everything within a property record is organized and easy to navigate. In order for that to happen, we need to match the naming conventions that we see displayed on the left here with the corresponding spreadsheet columns, which we can easily do by clicking on any one of these drop-down menus that we see on the right. Each one of these drop-down menus contains literally every single column name that's listed within our spreadsheet. For each one of these line items here, we need to go to the drop-down, search through it, and select the appropriate column for the corresponding naming convention that's displayed on the left. Now, because DataTree is a popular data service provider among the land investing community, Pebble has provided a way to match the majority of these with just a click of a button. We see Agent Pro 24-7, DataTree, Priced, and PropStream. These are all popular data service providers among the land community, and when you click on one of them, in our case, DataTree, as you can see, everything has been matched up except for owner full name, which we can easily do right now. We're just gonna go ahead and click on the drop down menu and scroll down to owner one full name. And there you go. I also wanna make a special shout out to what Pebble calls the county code, i.e. the FIPS code that we discussed earlier. Having this code for every single property that's on your list is essential if you wanna upload it successfully to Pebble. Now at this stage, we could simply just select this import list button here at the bottom and then proceed to the next step. But I wanna highlight something before we move on. Do you see this show custom fields button? Let's go ahead and click on that for a moment. As the words show custom fields suggest, what we're seeing here is a list of property fields that a Pebble user can completely customize and make their own. Underneath the settings tab, we see a small menu bar at the top and lo and behold, this tab called property fields is where you manage and create custom property fields. Each one of these kind of overarching squares essentially serve as kind of a main category and then all of these subsections are the actual custom property fields that show up when we click on that blue show custom fields link underneath campaigns. Once these property fields are created, they actually show up in a couple of different places within Pebble. The first, obviously, being that section we just discussed on that page where we're matching data between the spreadsheet columns and Pebble. But these property fields also show up within individual property records as well. And they're an extremely practical way to keep track of any relevant data that you find useful as you work through buying and selling properties. This top tab is the only one that is not customizable. But starting from due diligence onward, every single one of these tabs is 100% customizable. And if you notice, these tabs and their respective data fields match verbatim the names of the main categories and subsections 
of what we see displayed on the property field section under the settings tab. So that's the high level rundown when it comes to property fields. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and click import list. After we select import list, we're taken to a page where we can see the import of each record happen in real time. Once everything is finished importing successfully, if there are any errors that popped up within the spreadsheet, like maybe a particular row didn't have an address or there was missing information related to the property, Pebble will let us know about that in this section at the bottom. Once you've reviewed the errors that have kicked back out of the 1,567 rows, I don't care that two of them are missing addresses, I'm just gonna move forward. So once you're comfortable, we're gonna go ahead and proceed by clicking this view campaign button. Now that we've successfully declared our mailing preferences and instructions, uploaded our direct mail spreadsheet in the form of a CSV file, and matched the essential property fields with their corresponding spreadsheet columns, there's just a few more things for us to do. Within the campaign record itself, we need to go up here to this blue activate campaign button. And then once selected, we're taken to this page where we can review a sample of the letter template we chose after the data listed under a specific property record has merged with the corresponding placeholders. At this stage of the process, I strongly recommend that you do a quick read through of your mail piece just to make sure that there aren't any errors or mistakes. There's nothing worse than having a direct mail campaign fail because of a typo or missing information on your letter. Trust me. If all looks good, we go over here to the left, check the box for verification, and then hit this green activate now button. And there you have it, my friends. Pebble normally gets your first pieces of mail out the door within 24 hours or less. And on standard postage, letters should be hitting mailboxes within about 10 to 14 days. Welcome to the seller section. This is where I spend about 95% of my time in Pebble. The easiest way to understand the flow of this section is to consider it from the pipeline view. There is this weird table view, but I never use this feature. Essentially what you're seeing here is everything that happens to a lead from start to finish. Whenever I receive a new voicemail, text, or property submission through my website, a new record populates automatically underneath this lead in column. And then as the lead gets processed, it moves up the pipeline all the way to the complete stage. Now, these stages are set up specifically for my business workflow and they're 100% customizable. The way you would edit them is by clicking on these three little dots that are located on the right hand side of each respective column. This is also where you would add any automation features, but we'll circle back to that here in a little bit. If we take a look underneath the lead in column, you'll see we have a record called Mini the Moocher. And mini here is gonna be our example seller lead for the purposes of this video. Let's go ahead and open up mini's record here. As you can see, there are several sections of a seller record. First, we have the top section that lists the seller name, contact information, and record details. Then we have the stages of our pipeline, the task section, the property section, the note section, and then if we scroll down, we have messages, and at the very bottom, lead form. Let's start with the bottom section and work our way up to the top. Here underneath the lead form section, this is where information would display within a seller record if someone happened to submit their property information to you through an opt-in form displayed on your website. Assuming that the opt-in form displayed on your website was powered through the lead form feature offered by Pebble. You see, Pebble allows you to create custom forms and use a unique embed code to display these forms on any given website so that whenever someone submits their information on your website, the data will seamlessly integrate within your Pebble account and populate a new lead record. You can edit, manage, and access the unique embed code for lead forms underneath the automation sections within the settings tab. Now, obviously, many here did not come in through our website, so for now, we're just gonna move on to the messages section. Underneath messages, you're gonna see any incoming voicemail messages, text messages, emails, or any other form of incoming communication that you either enter in manually or set up to integrate automatically through Pebble's seller-specific email address. This section is actually really important because this is where you get the seller lead's name, property information, as well as the Pebble generated property code that if you're using Pebble in any capacity should be at the top of any mail piece that you send out through direct mail. 
Pebble assigns these property codes to literally every single property that's uploaded to their system and using it is an incredible way to stay organized and in clear communication with your seller leads. If this code is listed at the top of your letter, all you have to do is ask your seller leads to spell out the code on the voicemail message, text, email, or what have you. And then once you have it, you can easily sync up the property record with its corresponding seller record. Here, let me show you. Underneath the property section, if we click on this select button, do you see these codes here that are listed on the left hand side? If we know these unique codes, all we have to do is type it in this search box, hit enter, and then the corresponding property will immediately pop up and sync with your seller record. Now, if for some reason you don't have this specific property code, you can use other identifiers like the APN number, the address, the seller name, county, and so on. But honestly, do yourself a favor and run your business based on these property codes because honestly, it's a game changer. Now, if for whatever reason, you cannot locate the property within your database, or if the seller happens to be sharing a different property that they're interested in selling that you didn't mail to, you can add a custom property record right here by selecting this add new button. All you have to do is fill out these blank fields and then hit save and you're good to go. In the event that there's a package deal, or if maybe you buy a property from somebody, close on it, successfully take title and all that, and then they circle back with you and they have another property that they wanna sell, you can keep it all within the same seller record and then just have property records respective to each property that they're trying to sell you. For the sake of our example, I actually wanna sync up a particular property record. This is a dead lead, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. So when you sync a property record with its corresponding seller record, this is what it looks like. Now, what you're seeing here under the properties section is more of a highlighted or Cliff Notes version of the property record. You do have your tabs that include your custom property fields, but there's a lot more that property records have to offer. So we're gonna circle back to them here in a bit. Moving on from properties, we have the notes section, and this is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you keep an ongoing record of notes related to the seller and their property. A lot of my notes look like the results of running comps and due diligence, as well as the feedback that I get from land specialized agents that look into this specific deal on my behalf. Obviously notes can vary widely, but I don't think I need to belabor the point here. The note section is very straightforward. It's for taking notes. Similar to the note section, this is kind of Captain Obvious here, but this is where you would create and organize tasks that need to be completed based on the lead, the property, and the stage that the lead happens to be on. Now, what's cool is that if you're on a Pebble team or pro account, you can actually set up tasks to automatically populate based on whatever stage a lead happens to be on. So for example, if we go back to our main seller page for a moment, if we go to any one of these columns here, we can select on these three little white dots, select automations, and then add automation. If we click on the drop down underneath action here, we see we have a couple different options to choose from. We can assign or unassign a specific team member based on the particular stage that the lead is on. We also have the option to send the lead to some form of integration or, and this is what I wanted to highlight to you, we can select add task list and then you can assign a specific task list template. So for example, we're currently manipulating the valuating stage. I will apply this valuation checklist that I have created here. So now this has been added. Let's go back to our friend Mini. And then if I move Mini from lead in to valuating, all of a sudden I have automatic tasks that populate just by placing this particular lead in this specific stage of the pipeline. Pretty cool, right? For our purposes though, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and then set Mini back to the lead in stage. Talking about stages, these buttons here match the names and color coordination of each of these columns displayed on the main seller page. This section makes it so that we can easily move our seller lead up and down the pipeline just by clicking on one of these buttons. What I love about Pebble's pipeline view is that it allows me with just a quick glance of the eye to know exactly where I stand with literally all of my leads. It's pretty amazing. To wrap up the ins and outs of the seller record, up here at the top, we have our top section here, which lists out the seller's name, contact information, and the lead source, meaning where and how the lead contacted us, either by phone, email, 
campaign, website, Craigslist, Facebook, other, what have you. It also shows the date that the record was created and the date that it was most recently updated. Now that we went ahead and covered the seller record in detail, remember when I said we'd circle back and do a deep dive on property records? Let's go ahead and do that right now. Funny enough, when it comes to actually working within property records, it's rare that I actually use this main property section page that we get to by selecting this properties tab here on the left hand side. Nine times out of 10, if I'm accessing a specific property record, I'm doing so through its corresponding seller record under the sellers tab. That being said, I do come to this page on the occasion to utilize this filter section. As you can see at the top, there are several tabs in the menu bar that give us different criteria to sort properties by. We have county, tag, field, acquisition, and disposition. This means that if I want to look up any property within a specific county, by a specific tag, a specific field, or through criteria related to the acquisition side of my business, as well as the disposition side of my business, I can do so all right here with the click of a button and all of the properties that match my filtering criteria populate here at the bottom. If I'm honest with you, I'm really impressed with the degree of customization that this filter allows. This is actually really powerful because if I happen to apply say a certain tag like seller financing or terms to a specific property and I wanted to populate all of the properties within my Pebble database that are related to terms, I could do so with a simple click of a button as long as I had a specific tag related to terms. I could also use the same logic for things like a specific private money partner or a real estate agent or a title company or a particular state pretty much anything that I could ever think of. The fact that I can do this not only with tags, but also with custom property fields is extremely powerful because if I wanna do any kind of intense metric tracking, but need to filter it by, again, maybe a particular money partner or a market or a real estate agent, and I wanna see how many deals we've done, how much money we've made, what our average conversion rate has been, so on and so forth, this filter underneath the properties tab allows me to do all of that pretty seamlessly. Another major thing that I use this section for is if I wanna use Pebble specific property codes on a direct mail campaign that I've decided to process through a different direct mail service provider. For example, when I send mail through Rocket Print and Mail, I still wanna actually use my Pebble specific property codes because it just makes it so much more easier to sync up property and seller records. So I'll usually upload my campaign CSV file to Pebble first underneath the campaign tab because that's how Pebble generates these unique Unique property codes. And then once my CSV file has successfully uploaded and Pebble has generated all the new property records that correspond with that particular list, I won't activate the campaign within Pebble. I'll just simply keep it on pause and then come here to the property section to export a new CSV file with all the data related to that campaign that I'm working on, property codes included. I'll then provide this new CSV file to the other direct mail processor and then they'll do their thing. The process to select all the properties corresponding to a specific campaign and then exporting it looks like this. I'll go over to acquisition and then I'll come here to the select campaign section, click on the campaign that I'm working on, scroll down to the bottom, and then I'll click on this master click all button here. And then do you see these words that say 20 selected and then right next to it is a blue link that says select all 5,728 records? You need to actually make sure you click on this select all records because otherwise you'll end up just exporting 20 records and get frustrated. Trust me, I speak from experience. After all the property records are selected, you'll see some icons that pop up here and each one of these do a different function. You can delete all, for our purposes, this is the one that we would click, export all. You can also do a mass edit on tags, meaning you can delete, edit, or modify a tag. And what's super cool is this create campaign button. I really like this feature because if I happen to be diligent in the organization of my properties, meaning I use very detailed tags, fields, and what have you, I may through time be able to identify certain trends that indicate properties that have such and such criteria having a higher conversion rate than others. If that's the case, I can simply come here and sort by that specific criteria and boom, mailing those properties with the potential of higher conversion rates is out the door within 24 hours. If you ask me, I think that the search filter under the properties tab is one of Pebble's best features. This section is so robust that there's a lot more that you can do even beyond what I've shown you in today's video. It's pretty amazing. So though I don't come to this page normally to access individual property records, 
words, I do come here to use this filter. Now, to do a deep dive on all things involved regarding an individual property record, let's go back and visit our friend Minnie for a second. As I mentioned earlier, what we're seeing here within the seller record is kind of a cliff notes or abbreviated version of the property record. If I wanna see the full property record, I just have to click on the property code that's highlighted blue here. And here we are in a fully detailed property record. If we break down the property record into sections, on the right hand side, starting at the top, we have a menu bar, a section that hosts all of our custom property fields, a map section, a section for documents, integrations, images, a place for our corresponding seller record, as well as a place for our corresponding buyer record. On the left, we have a section for our tags. And then obviously we have two buttons, one button that's called create offer and one button that's called marked purchase. Underneath that, we have an activity feed that syncs up with the notes section from our corresponding seller and buyer records. Now we've already covered the custom property field section in detail. And some of these other sections are kind of self-explanatory, but the ones that aren't, deserve a little bit of commentary. Starting first with this menu bar here, to be brutally honest, this thing is kind of redundant. The images and documents tab display the same information that's uploaded in these two sections further down the page. Needless to say, the images section is for uploading and storing photos related to the property and the documents section is for uploading and storing documents like purchase agreements, deeds, contracts, closing packages, and so on. I don't think that these sections need much more explanation than that. Now the map tab, however, is slightly more advanced than what we're seeing here on the overview tab, but it is the same page that you'd access if you click this button that says edit map. Underneath the map tab, you can adjust and customize your parcel coordinates and download them as a KML file so that you can easily upload the outline of your parcel to something like Google Earth for further analysis. Now, so far, I've never had to update my coordinates within Pebble because I include them straight from DataTree whenever I upload a new property list for a direct mail campaign. But knowing that I can change my coordinates in case DataTree is incorrect or something is a great feature to have. Whether you access the edit map section by the menu bar at the top or the section within the property overview page itself, I think that this feature is really cool because within seconds of syncing up a property record with its corresponding seller record, I already know what the property looks like because I have an aerial map photo right here. Moving on from there, the next thing that I wanna highlight is this integration section. What you're seeing here is a feature that's available if you happen to power your website through our REI conversions land list theme. By clicking this send button, 90% of the data that's stored within this property record will push to a brand new listing on your website. If you know anything about managing online property listings, being able to get 90% of the job done by the click of a button is a huge deal. This thing saves so much time it's unreal. But again, in order to have access to this feature, you have to use REI Conversions Land List as the theme for your buyer lead facing website. Moving on now to the left hand side here. If we click on this little image icon, this is where we manage, create, and edit all of our tags. Every business is going to have a unique use for tags, but this is a fantastic feature because it allows you to organize your properties and your leads very efficiently. Now, the last thing for us to highlight related to property records is the create offer button and the mark purchase button. Getting the simpler one out of the way first, when you select this mark purchase button, you are informing Pebble that this property has moved from the process of being purchased to being owned. Now, when it comes to this create offer button, this is probably one of my favorite features that Pebble offers. When we click on this button, we're prompted to type in an offer price and an offer date. Let's just say for sake of example, we'll put in 30,000. When this offer details window pops up and you see this generate new button, if we select that, it pulls up all of the document templates that we have created within the template section underneath settings. So I'm gonna select my one page purchase agreement as an example you can see that all of the corresponding information of this property is all here except for the price. We have to come here to the sale price and then we'll just type in 30,000, put a dollar sign in front of it, and then we're good to go. Obviously you wanna read through it, make sure that there's no missing information, no merge fields that got messed up or what have you, but look at this, one button and we already have a purchase agreement. That my friends is hard to beat. 
And what's even more impressive, if we hit this save document button, we're taken to a screen where we can download our document as a PDF, print it out or what have you. But do you see this button that's called send mailing? If you happen to be in the situation where you needed to send out this purchase agreement or any other document template through traditional snail mail, instead of having to print this out and do the whole lick a stamp and get an envelope and write your address and all that stuff on it, you can literally just click this button and like magic, your letter will be sent out in the mail. So epic. Now the last tab on the left hand side here for us to go over is this buyers tab. Truth be told, there isn't much for us to cover here because the buyer section is almost identical to the seller section, except with one, you're dealing with seller leads and with the other, you're dealing with buyer leads. I don't ever deal with buyer leads directly because I use land specialized real estate agents who handle buyer leads on my behalf. So naturally, in my Pebble workflow, I don't have any stages or any kind of pipeline set up when it comes to the buyer section. Again though, I really want to get the point across that the process for setting up the buyer section is almost exactly the same as setting up the seller section. All you have to do is take what I've shown you here and then adjust it for whatever makes sense for the buyer facing side of your business. And with that, my friends, we have finally come to the end. As you can see, for most land investors, Pebble is hands down one of the best CRM solutions out there. I would highly recommend that you check them out and give them a try. Pebble has honestly been a game changer for my land flipping business and I believe for most of you out there anyway it will be the same for you guys can you do me a favor if I'm honest with you I've never worked so hard on a piece of content in my entire life I've literally poured my heart and soul into this video and the accompanying article, which for your convenience is linked down below. If you got any value in this video whatsoever, could you hit that like button and subscribe? That helps YouTube's algorithm know that this video is actually valuable and that it should be shown to more real estate investors like you and me. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll catch you next time.